Hello everyone, it's Alexa and I'm back with another Discord bot video. Today's video is going to be slightly different from my other Discord bot tutorials because I'm going to be showing you this really cool software called Discord Bot Studio. This software is an application that allows you to make and maintain Discord bots very easily. Basically, the app has a drag and drop node interface, which I'll show you in a little bit, that enables you to make Discord bots without any coding. The software is available for Mac and Windows, so if you want to um, purchase it from Steam, you can go ahead and do that. There's a link in the description. But today I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of creating a Discord bot with this software. So right now I have Discord Bot Studio open. This is the home page. And you can see we have documentation here too. So the first thing you want to do when you open the uh, when you open the Discord Bot Studio is go to Setup, the Setup tab here. And it's going to ask you a couple of things. It's going to ask for a command prefix for your bot. So basically, um, bots usually run off commands. So whenever you type a certain command, your bot's going to do a specific thing. And usually the command prefix is an exclamation point, so I'm going to leave it as that. But if you had a bot named testbot, you may want to do t uh, exclamation point to start the command. But basically, I'm just going to leave it as that exclamation point. You also want to include your bot token, which you can get from the, if you go to discord.com and you go to the developer portal and select the bot that you're going to use. And if you um, haven't created a bot yet, please go check out my first video where I show you how to do that. So um, if you go to this bot section here, you can copy and paste your token into this section or this field. And you also want to place your client ID, which you can also find in the general information right here. All right, so once you've done that, save it and it'll verify if it's all good. And then what you want to do is go to this choose bot tab. So click that and it'll take you to this page. And if you're starting new, you want to create a new bot. So you're going to choose a folder for your bot. Um, I just created a folder on my desktop and I called it actually right here. I called it test. And this is just where all your uh, bot files are going to be stored. So once you've selected that folder, give your bot a name. I already did this. So, and then you can select your active bot here. So I selected this test bot. All right, so now let's see if our bot is actually working. To do that, we can start our bot right here if we go to this Run Bot tab. So Start Bot, and now it's running. This actually loads up pretty quickly, and we can see that our tutorial bot is indeed online. So now let's dive into the commands and the functions that our bot can do using this Discord Bot Studio. So I'm going to go to the commands tab and I'm just going to delete this because I was playing around with it before. But when you first create a bot, you're going to get these two default commands. One's help and one is info. So if we double click on this box right here, we can see some information. We get the name of the command and also we can include who we want to have access to this command by entering the roles that we want to give this command access to. So you can save that and edit that as you want. Also, we have our command connected to the a response. And this response is called example help menu. So to see this response, we can double click this again. And so basically it allows us to um, edit what this response is going to be. So right now, as a default, it's sending an embed to our server when we type that um, help command. And um, it's going to send that in the channel that the command is sent in. We can also change some of these fields, like the color we want it to display. So we can 
choose any hexadecimal we really want, and it's going to show you a preview of the embed on the right here. We can also give change the title, so I'm just going to say test bot commands, or what was the bot's name again? Tutorial bot. Yeah. And then we can even add other stuff like this. Tutorial bot. And all that stuff. And once we're done, we can save it. So let's see if our bot is actually working. And we can use this command help to check that. So I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to go to run bot, we're going to stop and restart our bot so that these changes take into effect. I'm going to say exclamation point help and I should get this embed that I actually configured in the Discord bot studio. And it's pretty cool that we got this up and running that quickly, although it was a default. I mean, you can see how easily we could edit those text fields and we could kind of make this embed our own. And doing this with code would probably take way longer because, I mean, I don't even know how to code an embed off the top of my head for a Discord bot. I'd probably have to fish through documentation for that. But with this software, it's much easier. So we're going to add another command. And the way we do that is by clicking this button called add command. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to give my command a name. So I'm going to create a command that says hello to me whenever I use the command. So I'm going to call it hello. I'm going to add it. And now we have this blue box here that looks very similar to these other two default commands that we were given. Now that we have this command, we need to add a response so that something else happens after we call this command. So all you got to do is click add response. Then we're going to give this response a name. So I'm going to say, say hello. And then we're going to give this a category of message because we want to send this as a message. But there's also a variety of other things we can do. We can create a variable out of this. We can... Um, put it into a spreadsheet even. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this software. And our response type is going to be a message. So let's add that. What we can do is drag this here and just click on this dot here. And then we can connect it to this other side here. And now these two, um, the trigger and the response are connected. So now, once they're connected, we actually get some more things we can edit. So if I double click on the say hello, we're going to have this pop up. And this is basically telling us um, what message that we want to send after this command is called. So after the command's called, I want it to say hello to the user in the channel that the command was sent in. So for the channel name, I want this message to be sent in. I'm going to actually use one of the variables that this um, software has given to us that we can access. And this is the command channel variable. So the way we get this variable is by doing our dollar sign, dollar sign, and then command channel. So whatever, wherever the user sends this message to or sends this command in, it's going to reply in that same channel. Let's say you only wanted it to respond in a commands channel, then you would put the name of that commands channel in there instead of this variable. But anyways, in the response, we're going to say hello, and then let's at the user that used the command. So we can do that by, it actually tells us right here on the right, it says we can at and then say command author, which is also one of the variables they give us, which gets the author of the command. So that will ping them. So hello, at command author. I'm a tutorial bot. So now that we have this message set up, we can save it. So now our response is complete. Make sure you save your flow and 
go back to home and we're going to stop and restart the bot. All right, let's go back to Discord. And if I type the command, hello, it's going to respond to me and say, hello, Adelaitra, I'm a tutorial bot. So that's kind of the process you have to take when using this um, Discord bot studio. You can see we went through that in, it's really only two blocks that we're using here to make that whole reply there, to make that whole command. Uh, normally in code, you would have to use um, probably a bunch of if statements and stuff like that, but it makes it a lot easier in this node interface. One thing we can also do with Discord Bot Studio is create our own variables. So what I'm going to do is add a command, and I'm going to call this command age. And this is going to be used to compare the age of users and do something with that stored information. So right now I have this command called age. I'm going to save it and I'm going to add a response and I'm going to select this variable store value in a variable response type. And I'll give this response of a name of um, age variable. So let's add that in. And then all we got to do is connect the dots here and then let's double click this again. We're going to give this variable a name of user age and we're going to make sure that this variable type is a number. And this is where we choose the actual number that we want to store. So when someone uses this command, basically they would type exclamation point age and then after that, they would add a space, and then after that, they would put their age. So, the parameter we're looking for is the first parameter. And as you can see on the right here, it actually tells you how parameters work in this. So, I'm going to want to be selecting the first parameter that the person gives me when they use this command. So, let's save that. The next thing I want to do is add a response and we're going to keep it as variable and we're going to call this compare age so basically we're going to check this variable's value for the response type so let's add that in and then connect these two boxes and then double click this again and we're going to be asked which variable name we want to check well, if we go back to this box, we see that the variable name we created was user age. So if we go back in here, we can just type user age and then it will compare this variable. And we're going to check if this variable is greater than a certain value. So we're going to say greater than 18. So let's say that. Now we need to um, add a true and false, add two responses for both true and false. So I'm going to call this command adult or this response adult and we're going to send a message and it's going to be a message response type. So let's add that in and we're going to say connect that to the false side and then also we want to add a response called um, child and we'll make sure that's a message as well. And then we'll connect this to the true side. So if we double click, we're just going to enter a channel that we want this command to send this message in. So that's going to be command channel, which is one of the variables that the Discord bot studio gives you. So in our response message text, we want to say you are, ooh, I forget, oh, child, so you are a child and let's put in our command channel and let's save that and then we can go to the adult box and again put command channel and then in the response we're going to put you are an adult all right so let's save this and we can go back to home and 
run and restart our bot. So I'm going to start our bot and wait for it to get online. And then when we use this command age, I'm going to put a parameter after it. So 16, let's say, and then it's going to say you are a child. But if I put um, 30 after this, then it would say you are an adult. This is probably not something you would use in a server, but I'm just trying to show you how the user variables work and how you can create your own variables to match certain features that you want your bot to perform. Again, thank you for watching, and the software is available to purchase on Steam for Mac and Windows, and I have a link in the description for that. And make sure to comment what other types of Discord bot videos you want me to do, and I'll be happy to make videos for them.